Hey, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. This is your host, Jim. And today we have another guest who is a new student in our community. She spent some time flipping around on YouTube, trying to find a business model that worked. She actually comes from a very successful corporate career that she's recently left uh, in insurance. But when she left that job, she wanted to find a way to make money online. And she started looking at some Amazon opportunities and was very disillusioned with some of the high price, expensive pie in the sky things that she was hearing and seeing on YouTube until she encountered our community. She jumped into the Proven Amazon course. We're just three, four months into her journey. She's already sold $70,000 worth of product and she has big plans for the future. And more importantly for you, the listener today, she really spells out the process that she goes through, the tools that she uses, the stuff that she's buying and how she's doing this. It's a really cool story full of very practical tips as well. So enjoy today's episode. If you have any questions or you want to be a part of our community, it's completely free. You can go to silentgym.com anytime you'd like and jump into our free Facebook group. 62,000 plus people hanging out, hundreds and hundreds of success stories, thousands of us doing this business together, helping each other out, encouraging each other. If you want to be a part of that, please come join us. We're here for you. All right. God bless you, business building warrior. Let's jump over and get Chris on the line right now. So Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. That's truly a pleasure. Good to have you here. We'd I'm, love to hear your story. Let's just jump right into it. Well, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. And, and my story is, um, I would say, rather short compared to most of your listeners and probably and most likely most of your previous attendees. I, um, I only started Amazon FBA about three and a half months ago, actually a little bit less than that. Wow. And, uh, I didn't realize that. Okay. That's yes. great. Yes. And, um, and I, I can say that, I, you know, I feel like I've had some success with it and, you know, being invited to your show is definitely, I think is the highest measure of success, right? I mean, this, <laughs> I don't know about this, that, but <laughs> it sounds it good. Does, it does <laughs> validate my efforts a little bit, even, sure. even more so than the funds in the bank account. Right. So, um, for me, it's not necessarily money is not my primary motivator is being part of something is being making a difference and um, mm -hmm. showing off a little bit to myself. I don't know. It just I, yeah. I feel like I look prettier in the mirror when I had a successful day. You know, Oh, I love that. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, money is kind of the result of doing business the right way. It's not the end yes. goal, but you can't stop it if you're serving right. others well. If you're providing a product that people want, you're going to benefit financially. The money's not the goal. It's the result of having done business well. I love that you kind of couch that way. And yeah, absolutely. The yes. success, it just, it gives you a sense of pride and accomplishment that you've served and you've been rewarded for serving. I love it. I love how we're yes. starting so far. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And it's, um, you know, I, I really think... I am the type of person, this might sound odd, I just don't want to do anything that I don't want to do. If I don't want to do something, I just simply don't do it. So I've had to always had to arrange my life in a certain way or make, make certain things happen in order to for me to be able to do that, right? So for me, making money has to be the result or a byproduct of me doing something fun. So it's not even, I think of making money a byproduct of just doing something that I enjoy doing. And it's, this is something that I come from a completely different world. I, um, mid-September in the middle of a pandemic, I said, you know what? I am done with my corporate job. It was wonderful. It had been my dream job for quite a while, but, um, at some point, it stopped being that. And like I said, I, I choose to not do things that I don't want to do. If it doesn't make me happy, I just won't do it. And um, mid-September, middle of a pandemic, and I am, you know, piecing out. And my last day is a Friday, and I wake up on Saturday morning thinking that for the first time, I basically proclaimed it all over the, you know, my, my family, um, Facebook, I am taking some time off. I have not, I've never been a believer in holidays or taking time off from work. 
you know, when you do something that you love, you don't need time away from that, right? Ooh, I love it. Yeah. So, Build a life that you don't need to take a vacation from. Right? Exactly. There's actually and, a Hebrew you know, principle of, you know, in, there's no word in Hebrew for vacation. Some people don't realize that. In, in America, oh. we've very much made it like, oh, you need a vacation. You need to turn it all off for a while. Right. There's not actually any, for those of us who follow a biblical worldview, there's no biblical support for that. And, and there's certainly, you know, in, in the Hebrew tradition, there's no support. But the Sabbath, and I'll take in a day off a week, I will defend mm-hmm. that vehemently. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm all in on defending. You got to take at least one day a week off because otherwise you'll burn yourself out. There's too much evidence that shows us that. That's take true. Take that day a week off and just go. And I take work with me when we go on a, a family trip. We can call it a vacation. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But work's coming with me and I'm going to spend some time monitoring my business while we're there because I love it. I right. love what I get to do. And mm-hmm. uh, I love that you made that point. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And you get, you know, at least I get antsy when I'm away from it. I'm, it's like fear of missing out or, mm-hmm. or I'm also very much of a, like a type A person. You know, I have to be on top of things in control, have to be, um, you know, sometimes a little bit nitpicking and, um, if you ask my husband, I'm sure he could detail things a lot better for Maybe you. Maybe we should go get him on. Where's he at? <laughs> he is at work right now. He is at his um, nine to five job. Gotcha. But, um, do you guys do this together as, or is this kind of your thing right now? It's only been three This months. is kind of my thing, but he's definitely the mule. So uh, you got him working. Nice. So he's putting paper boxes and you're just the, yes. the brains of the operation. He gets home and <laughs> immediately I greet him with the open door to load, take boxes, to take to UPS, run to USPS. Um, I love it. And then um, prepping and yeah. packing because I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I do a lot of the physical work myself also, but he's just so much better at it. And sure. I don't know. It you just know, makes him like look so much more manly, or at least that's women. what I tell him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So you've only been doing this three plus months. You know. So it just happened so weirdly. Like I, I was planning on taking the Some holidays off. off. Yeah. yeah. And then, which I, I hadn't even taken a weekend off in a year and a half. So not even a full weekend. I was just constantly plugged in. And um, and that's just my rhythm, right? And I left that. And guess what? I do the same thing now with my own business. I'm constantly plugged in. And um, I'm that person. I wake up. I'm in, in Dallas. I'm So I'm central time. Mm-hmm. At 2.01 a.m. every morning, my brain wakes me up to check my sales because, you know, it's midnight Pacific time. And the, the day changes over. Wow. <laughs> and I, I just, don't know if I'm the right person to talk you through if that's good or healthy or unhealthy. I'm not sure, but okay. <laughs> that's it's you, just you wake up at 2 a.m. and check your stats. It's and now it's actually getting a lot less. Now I probably do that maybe three times a week. But sure. it used to be every night it was like I was programmed. Like I had started waking up at 2 or 1 a.m. Wow. And then I would just go back to sleep like a baby. That's that's yeah. funny. Well, I mean, I think if it, if it's confession time and you get a hundred Amazon FBA sellers in the room, you could say, "Now, be honest. How many times a day are you checking your sales?" Oh. It's like more like how many times a minute am I checking my exactly. sales? For some of us, right? It's yes. Like, refresh, refresh. Ooh, yeah. Another sale. Wait a few minutes. Refresh. Ooh, a couple more sales. It's really right. fun. It's addictive. It's like the best it's video game ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And especially when you you can, you start off with you know um, on a on a pretty good trajectory, right? It's it's like I always want to beat the previous day. Got to do more more than the previous day. More than my best day ever. More than. Uh, it's always about doing a little more and it's, again, it's not financial. It's about my sense of well-being, you know, doing a little bit more, beating my previous record. And, you know, we're not talking, I mean, we're talking $2,500 days. We're not talking $250,000 days, right? Like, so I'm obviously not a top seller. I'm brand new, but I feel like I've, I've, um, I just, you know, I'm very tenacious and that I'm, I'm kind of like a dog with a bone, right? So just, it's, You're getting after that's it. me. Yes. Well, and I think we can establish, you've been doing this long enough. If you were a weekend we would, into this or two weeks, we wouldn't have you on the podcast, you know, because you can't draw a whole lot from that. But you're right. far enough into this that we can start to set a trajectory of what the future looks like. 
six months, a year from now, two years from now. And if you're open to it, I could even, because I've seen it a few thousand times, we can even tweak your process a little bit and what you're doing and maybe improve, you know, so that trajectory is improved because, right. you know, if you had a thousand miles and you're off by one degree, you end up at a very different place than you would have if you'd have been on true north, right? So even these right. little tweaks, that's where something like, you know, coaching can be so valuable as well. Yes. You know, having someone to say, something... you're not asking the right questions right now kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Or you're, there's this little piece you're missing that'll take you to a right. much better place a year from now, right? Um and, yeah, I, I coaching is definitely something on my uh, plate, and I actually have a call here in a couple, in maybe a week or so. Um, oh, really? With well, that yeah. wasn't a push to get you into coaching. That was just right. kind of me saying, you know, that's one of the right. benefits when you have some momentum. Mm -hmm. you, you could do it when you when you don't know anything, but when right. you have some momentum, having that person who's a few miles ahead of you, kind of tweaking and adjusting your path, absolutely, be very and, valuable. Uh, it's very interested, interesting how you associated, you you made the correlation, you know, between a true north. I, I think in terms of investment, of investing, right? Mm -hmm. So in past investments do absolutely affect the uh, the size of your portfolio in the future, right? So it's anything like, you know, extra fees 10 years ago make the difference between, you know, you having an extra 10 to, you know, let's say 100,000, you know, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of lost opportunity cost. Yep. And to me, uh, coaching is definitely something that I would like to do. And uh, also because I'm getting asked, um, by um in in different facebook groups to to coach some other newbies which is you know quite funny but um coaching it's something that i think could could make it uh could make the snowball bigger right um learning sooner doing it better sooner will increase the profits faster so yes. and it will get me to my goal I think one of the biggest benefits on that, as you're kind of processing through the benefits of coaching with us or with anyone who knows what they're doing is, and I kind of alluded to this a moment ago, but knowing what questions you should be asking right now is a big deal because oftentimes, and you'll start to see this in the Facebook groups, you'll see the new people coming in and with great ambition and, and great authority and excitement and enthusiasm, they're asking the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Right. They're saying, someone, please tell me what to sell. Like, right. That's not the question you should be asking of this group right now. You know, I know that's where you want to get. I get it. That's the wrong question. And so a coach can say, you know, I understand the heart of that question. I know what you're mm -hmm. trying to, but the way to get to where you're trying to go isn't that question. Right. It's this question. It's which content should I be studying right now? to give myself the greatest opportunity to succeed with this business model, you know, and you're going to learn what products to sell as a result. So I was just thinking, you know, um, I was um, this morning at coffee time. I was, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a last minute person <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, what am I, there's, you know, I, I, I'm on a podcast today. It's the number one podcast, right. For sellers, resellers. It's, uh, I'd like to, to think so. I'm sure there's shows out there with more listeners than we have, but you know, there's a there's a good number of people listening. We can leave it at that. <laughs> Absolutely, and um, you know, so I'm thinking, you know, what kind of nuggets of wisdom, right? I, I have limited experience, mm -hmm. um, but I think I am really experienced um, in the beginner's ways, right? Sure. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you're, and, and you telling your story and, and where you've mm -hmm. bumped your head and what's worked. I mean, that's very, very valuable. That's going to be content that I couldn't come up with because I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't remember what it was like to be three months in. Right. That's a vague, distant memory for me. Right. Um, and it's, you know, so going back to my story for just a Please. second, because it's, it's going to, to make a little bit more sense when I'm going to say after. So, um, I started, like I said, I, I quit my uh, corporate job in mid-September and I had sold my house and bought a new house like two weeks, uh, maybe two weeks before I um, turned in my resignation. So it was maybe, I don't know, I had bought it. I had just moved in like a month before into a bigger house, nicer house, 
um, right? And then um, I just up and left one day. And things just happened in a way that, I don't know, it's like the, it's like the universe supported my decision and it pitched in and, and opened new doors and showed me pathways. It was just um, a very interesting, uh, it's very interesting the way things worked. So how I got started with Amazon is I had sold my previous house and bought a new one and had become pretty close uh, with our realtor, who's amazing. And um, our realtor was also flipping homes for himself. So he had bought this house and um, my house is full of books. So the reading is my only hobby. That's the only time. If I have some time, that's what I will do. And he mentioned that this house was full of books, like three bedrooms full of books. So I'm I'm thinking like, oh my God, you can't, you know, then they were going to trash them. I'm like, you can't trash them. They're books, they're valuable. They're like children, they're like pets, you know. It's <laughs> books are made to be right. loved. Yes. So it's like, well, come on over and get take what you want. And it just happened, right? So I get and I get there. It's not anything that I would read. Uh it's it's very um it's a very um niche topic. And not something that I was interested in, but um, immediately I thought there's a lot. There's a lot of great books here. There, there's a lot of old books, uh, valuable things, things that you don't find anywhere else. There's entire um, brand new sets, right? So I'm thinking, I need to save some of this and then figure out what to do with it after. So um, yeah, my husband was very pleased that he had to haul out like. 50 boxes of books in the middle of, uh, of moving. So we basically every, did Every time that. your husband enters the story, he's <laughs> carrying heavy things around. I get that. Yes. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. I have guess ever, that's not my thing. Have you ever heard the advice that we give people when trying to figure out if a book is probably a good one or not to sell on mm -hmm. Amazon? The real quick, dirty general advice. Have you ever heard it? No. You kind of hit on it. Okay. It's If you look at it and you say to yourself... I would never read this and I don't mm -hmm. know anyone else who probably would either. That's gold. <laughs> <laughs> that is great if, advice. If you look at it and go, I can think of 10 friends right now who would recognize this author and probably read this book. And I read it too, I think, you know, yeah, that's not good, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the general rule. Uh, and of and, course, there's exceptions. Yeah. But. And that's funny because I, um, I get a lot of, I get a lot of Facebook messages and uh, from other um, rookies or even people that have been doing, you know, like, what's your, you know, how do you find products? And one of my things is what you think, your opinion doesn't matter. My opinion of something is completely insignificant, Irrelevant. right? That's right. So if you start with that, well, who would buy this? Yeah, I would never buy this. I mean, that's, you know, what, what is, I would never buy this, right? Who's yeah. going to spend money on this? That is that is a, a massive mistake, right? Yeah. Like when I go to, I don't know, let's say look for uh, source and cosmetics, right? I don't go to the stuff that I use myself, right? It's so basically your opinion of anything that you should buy doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what keep us says. I, I talk um, about in, in uh, the book, Silent Sales Machine, which I'm rewriting right now. Okay. Because there's, it, it needs some work. It's gotten a little outdated, but it's still a good book for sure. But one of the things, one of the sections is the messages that will derail you in this business. And one of them is start with your passion. Mm -hmm. It sounds good. And it's a fun topic to talk about. Everyone likes to talk about things that they're passionate about. But if you try to force business success and e-commerce success into that little realm of what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. you're ignoring your customers in the entire process. You've got to say, what are people looking for? It may not be something I'm passionate about. I'm not saying ignore your passions. Sometimes people hear me right. say, I didn't, I didn't just say ignore your passions, pursue them with your free time vigorously, have fun with them. If you can monetize them, beautiful. Right. But the odds of you saying, hey, world, this is what I'm passionate about. Somebody pay me because I'm passionate about this. That's a tough road to go down. Mm -hmm. But if you start where we're talking about with who would read this? Not me, not anyone I know, but let's investigate it. Oh, wow. It's worth $150 to somebody right. I can get it for free off the floor of a 
house my buddy's selling. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. yeah, you can get excited about that business now, even though you have no idea what that title even means. Yep, absolutely. And that's exactly what happened uh, to me. I, um, I became quite the expert in um, certain kitchen items. And I haven't even walked into my kitchen in a very long time. I, I don't even... I think I made coffee maybe a couple of times, but, um, yeah. and it's, but suddenly I am an expert in pots and pans and um, I can walk in certain stores and tell you exactly what price point you should buy this at, what the price is going to be, what the price was, you know, six months ago, a year ago, this time last year, because some things are seasonal and it's uh, you need to, you need to know your craft, right? You start off as new, but you need to learn quickly, right? And then again, it's not what we think doesn't matter. It's whatever Keep Up says that matters. At least, I mean, I've sold so much stuff that I had no idea what it was. I found these tools that I was like, I, I, I don't use tools. I mean, other than the mouse and a keyboard, that's pretty much, you know, and maybe a makeup brush. Those are my tools. You know, tools don't mean anything to me. I didn't even know what they were. I turned a pretty, pretty good profit. That's right. Um, yeah. That's so right. it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's a matter, it's a matter of, and I love that you mentioned Keepa. We mentioned that on many podcast episodes. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few tools. And for many, many people, it's the only tool, the only paid tool they use in growing right. an incredible business on Amazon. Right. Uh, and the reason that's an important point for us to make right now, Chris, is a lot of people who will be listening to this have maybe stumbled around on YouTube and they've watched some other videos from other experts talking about how to build a business on Amazon. And one of the first things 90% of the time you're going to hear, and that's not an exaggeration. If you put all of the quote experts and gurus and whatever category you want to put me in, all the people who are teaching you how to build a business on Amazon, if you put us on a pie chart, 90% of us are talking about private label, which yes, means and find a product, do your research, buy these tools, buy this course, fill your garage with products. Your husband will be working all day on a Saturday unloading the truck as it delivers it to your house, right? And then six months later, your husband will be saying, hey, why do we still have all that stuff in our garage? Right. <laughs> He's like, well, right. I haven't got to that part of the course yet, but we're $30,000 into the process. When do we start making money would be the conversation you'd have the vast majority of the time. That's the experience. The rest of us, that little piece of pie the rest of us are in that mm -hmm. I'm in proudly is, hey, let's make money before we spend any money on tools. Keep us 17 bucks, 15, 17 bucks. Right. We've got a process where if you get learn how to use that, you can flip products. You don't. You look at it and you hold it up. It's got a barcode on it. I don't even know what people use this for. All I know is Keep is saying it's selling consistently for $35 right. and I can buy them for six all right. day. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yep. And that's, that's, that's right. the business. And I see it, you know, the, the private label, I, I, you know, it's PL. I actually call it the, the pants losing model because you basically. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. The way your creative brain works. I love that. <laughs> The pants losing model. Yeah, because yeah. you basically, you know, kind of lose your pants on that in most cases. And I see a lot of, again, I'm all over Facebook. And before I found the, uh, the Proven Amazon course and the Facebook groups, I, um, you know, I joined a couple of other groups and some other things. And again, YouTube is full, right? How to find a, you know, how to come up with a, um, the best private label product in 15 minutes, you know, make a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars your first month. Right. Mm -hmm. Sounds mm -hmm. fantastic, but it doesn't tell you that, you know, you need to work with China. You need to wait for, you know, it's basically you start off not having a clue about what you're doing. Right. And do you, it's, uh, do you know why Chris, I'd like to hear from your perspective, mm -hmm. take a stab at this one. And you may have heard me say it before, mm -hmm. which is kind of be cheating, but I'm going to hear it. Hopefully you've never heard me address this before. Why do you think it is that 90 to 95% of the experts on YouTube talking about how to build a business on Amazon are talking about the pants losing model. Why do you think honestly, that is? I think it's kind of self-serving, honestly. It's um, because it's such a, it's so difficult and so discombobulated. A new person wouldn't know where to start. What do I do? Google, um, you know, Alibaba, how to start up, you know, they need guidance, right? So when you need guidance, you need to look at the guru, right? You need to find the, the person with the know-how. And the person with the know-how is clearly the person on YouTube that's 
telling you how they make all of this and how you could be doing it too. And you're thinking that you're missing this little nugget of information that's going to open all the doors for you. But in fact, it's a complex and complicated model. And it's something that I probably won't even think about for the next 10 years. And that's from, that's my opinion. And, and I love how you just couched that, nailed it. And the question I would question I would ask is, you know, when they talk about it, how long is it between now, day one, starting out going, I'm gonna launch a private label product on Amazon? Yep. How long is it between that point uh -huh. and actually putting money in the bank? If you if you held months. On, months. Right. Months. And especially now with COVID, mm -hmm. I I just order a couch from Nebraska home furniture in September, right? I just got an email that it won't be delivered till May. This is a huge company, wow. right? So, Legit, but this is yeah. a huge company. Mm -hmm. Imagine the kind of pull I would have with a supplier yeah. on my first private level label product. I mean, I could be waiting till you know May of 2025. Right. It's, uh, and, here, and here's the dirty little secret of the industry, the part that's going to make sense to you. And you, you may have already figured this out, but for the listener's sake, let me just share, since we're talking about the pants losing model, I might just start calling it that. And I'll put a little <laughs> asterisk and say, Chris Bean. Uh, but the the fact that it takes you months to even have a prayer right. of making a return, it benefits the guru in a very big way. And do you know why that is? Because months from now, you're not going to go back and blame the expert who started you on this journey for your failure and ask for your money back mm -hmm. on the $10,000 course, training, package, coaching, software, right. courses, events. You're just not. The vast majority of people, human nature is you're not. So here they are with a, let's be generous, 5% success rate. That's very generous, by the way. Mm-hmm. And the other 95% of the people that they sold courses, software training content to aren't making any money. How do you look at yourself in the mirror? So that's why we don't start there unless right. someone has success, a track record of building a brand, getting it licensed and registered and trademarked. And they've been down that road and they're familiar with marketing and the legal side and all the expenses and they've got the money and they've got the time. We've got the team that can make these things. They've happen. got the team, right, to work on their, We've on got their the team. core business behind the right. scenes, right? Or like, if if you get on Amazon right now and type in the word coffee, you're going to get about I don't know 100,000 results. One of the right. top five results is one of our students, right? We know how to make big things happen, but we're not going to squeeze out of every new person that comes in the door thousands and thousands of dollars, feeding them the dream that they can be the next best selling coffee on Amazon. We're not going to do that. We're going to help them put money in the bank after having spent, you know, let me just ask you this. What's your return on investment been from the vantage point? It doesn't have to be exact, but just approximate. How many dollars have you put into your education with our community compared to getting into the, the part of your story where you share the numbers a little bit? You know, you're only three, four months into this, <clears throat> excuse me, but what's that ROI looking like for you? I, um, I did things a little bit differently. Um, I, um, I had a few things going for me, and one of those was I had some, I had some backup money, okay. And that is something I am a very impatient person. I want it all, and I want it all yesterday. <laughs> I'm not growing slowly, getting rich slowly, building slowly, um, is is amazing. I just know myself in order to keep myself motivated is I need some quick wins. Right. And, um, I actually, um, I actually spent quite a few on, um, quite a bit of money on different systems. One of the things that really got me into the, um, uh, Amazon model, other than, than having those free books that I basically Googled, you know, where can you offload some books, you know, um, and I found, you know, eBay, Amazon, eBay, I just don't like eBay. It just seems, I actually don't like eBay simply because I don't like their website. The page looks too busy for me. It just, I just, hmm. it doesn't work for me. So Amazon looked great. And uh, one of the things that really got me um, a little bit deeper with Amazon is the fact that I ran across this tactical arbitrage uh, YouTube video 
And I have my background is in a little bit of technology related stuff and technology and and looking at data is like is is what I love to do. And I saw tactical arbitrage and it was like it was like a rail light just shine. <laughs> it was fantastic. I said I I have to do this. I have to learn the software and um that is one of the things that I, I got, uh, you know, pretty quickly from the beginning. But it's, uh, you know, my my story is just kind of, it goes kind of like, it's it's really wild, right? There's a, a much easier and better way of, of doing things. I kind of jumped into everything I could get my hands on. But the one course that I actually took, the one course that I actually paid for and took was the least expensive of all of them. And that was the $29 per month, I think, paid for the proven Amazon course. So if I were new and if I were to start this business tomorrow, or if let's say my neighbor wanted to start this business tomorrow, um, I think I would give them a very simple and clear roadmap to success. And I think it's pretty much uh, foolproof. It's it's pretty much guaranteed unless you either don't follow the process or I don't know. I'm thinking that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, yeah. You you've yeah. got to bring you've got to bring your motivation. You got to set mm-hmm. your ego aside. You got to be willing to constantly learn. Mm-hmm. And as much as as you may want to make it happen quickly, even if you've got some excess funds. See, we, Chris, we have people come to us frequently that say, hey, Jim, you know, I understand that you teach this slow and steady growth thing, but I've got $150,000 and I kind of want to just ramp up fast. What can you do right. for me? And I say, nothing that I couldn't do for a person with had $5,000 to spend. Your excess funds don't actually give you any advantages. You're going to have to do the work. You can right. have to find the product. I can yeah. show you how to find the products, and you can use your money once you understand the process to hire a team mm-hmm. and get and ramp up way quicker than you could if it's one person waiting for that check from Amazon so they can mm-hmm. flip that money back into inventory. You know, there's different speeds here, but your pile of cash gives you no advantages in this business because you're right. going to research products one at a time. You're going to decide if it's a winner or not. You're going to send it in. You're going to wait for Amazon to sell it, and you're going to get paid. Now maybe you could do it a little faster. But you can't just shove a pile of money at the process and, and right. get the results out the other side, as you've learned, I'm sure. Um, it's a, there is a, there's a bit of a tedious aspect to this, but what mm-hmm. keeps most people going is the results. So as you're telling your neighbor, hey, get into the proven Amazon course. Three months in, I was doing this. You could be doing something similar if you commit to the work. Right. Uh, right. Does that resonate? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so we, you know, but you yes. go to a private label guru with that hundred and fifty thousand. Oh boy, they've got a plan for you. They do. They <laughs> and do. It involves them taking half of the money, and eight months from now, maybe you'll be one of our successful students. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's and that is definitely not the case with the proven Amazon course. What I um, that was what really opened up my. Um, my eyes and and really showed me the clear path, right? Um, I mean, it was, I don't know, it was somewhere between uh, Jimmy Smith and Honey and Keepa uh, when everything just clicked for me. Mm. And and the best I can say is if if you are new, if you're just starting out, if you got burned by a different model, um what I would do is I would get the proven Amazon course. I would get the, you know, the monthly option and I would binge watch it. Right. It's, it's like, and it's entertaining. It's not some boring, tedious, at least for me, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of geeky <laughs> and I found it entertaining. And I basically binge watch for like three days straight. I watched all of Amazon 101 and I watched all the replants course and you know, that's where it, it all clicked for me. And the immediately the following day, I was able to find successful, um, profitable products, right? Because 
sales don't matter, right? Sales are just pretty much like our opinion of, of, of an item, right? They're insignificant. What matters is profit, right? Uh, say, you know, showing the sales app and the, your totals year to date, you know, it uh, to the bank, right? It won't get your mortgage paid. They it's don't care. profit that matters. Yes. And when you're new, there's usually a, a massive trade-off. When you are brand new, you either have a lot of time or a lot or money or, That's right. you know, it's, there's always going to be a trade-off. So if you have, usually people have more time than money. And in that case, you need to look for a little bit of a better profit, right? When you have more time than money, you can't be okay, or at least I wouldn't be okay with a 10%, 15%, 20% ROI. I would look right. at 40, 50, 80. Yes. Right now, yeah. my ROI is 100%. Or, Beautiful. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, right. And it's and, and because, typically in our community, the lowest is around 30. As far as, you know, you don't see anybody saying, I've been doing this three years and I'm at 20%. The only guys I've met who were there, I, we did a podcast episode. It's been over a year ago. It was a guy who was doing tens of millions in drop shipping. Wow. Okay. Very low ROI. Right. And some people were enamored by that model. But the reason I had him on this show was because he was doing everything he could do to talk everyone out of ever going down that road. <laughs> because it was a million moving parts, moving tens of millions of dollars, putting right. a few hundred thousand dollars into his bank account every year right. with headaches all day, every day. Right. And uh, he was, it, so we are not proponents of drop shipping, by the way, which is another model you'll see gurus talking about on, right. on YouTube, by the way. It is a disaster waiting to happen. It's not scalable. You want mm -hmm. to take possession of the products, have them in hand and sell them to customers. That's what Amazon expects. Don't drop right. ship on Amazon, please. Right. Yes, uh, and it's it's against terms of service, right? It and it's also um, it's also the fattest, the fastest way to get shut down and to get bad reviews. And now, it, with one exception, though, and I don't because I'll get hate mail if I don't say this because there's people oh. out there making money. If you find, let's say, one of your great products, Chris, you find it's a, like a local product that you're looking mm -hmm. like. Maybe the manufacturer is actually right down the road. I'm going to call him. That's right. just as an example. It could be anyone in the world, but. You're the only one selling it. You could go to them and say, and it's a, and it's a higher ticket item. Mm -hmm. You could go to them and say, hey, rather than me ordering these and you ship them to me and then we put them on the shelf in this whole process, could you guys, if I just sent you the orders, could you fire them out to customers as they sell and make me your sales rep right. and you stay in communication? I mean, these are people you send birthday cards to and you stay in communication. You know what their inventory level is. You know, you're right. daily or regular then the drop shipping can work. But if mm -hmm. you're thinking you're going to drop your ship, drop ship your way with a thousand random products that you found and, you know, flipping from eBay to, you know, quickly go grab one at the store when I need one, right. and, like that's just going to be a disaster. And it's impossible to scale, impossible right. to make good money with. I haven't met that person yet. I've met the people who sell the courses and they're making a lot of money, <laughs> but I haven't met their successful students like we have in our right. community with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of success stories of people who are applying the simple stuff that you've said. Right. And after a few dollars in, they're putting money in the bank and they're ready to scale onto these other mm -hmm. exciting models if, at that's, some point. That's absolutely, uh, I, th I think I think those are stops somewhere along the way. I think it's it's as you learn more and I think it's, an, an, it's organic. It happens it organically. Is. Beautiful it's, word. Yeah, it's, I think you get from retail arbitrage to online arbitrage, you find the product and then you just want to find it a little cheaper because it's moving fast and you want to maybe up your profits by, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of percentages and you find a, a wholesaler or a distributor. And then maybe you start buying more from that wholesaler, which makes you go into the wholesale model more. And yep. then you find all these generic products that maybe you can package as private label. So I think it's something that can happen organically yes. as you grow, That's but right. to start off, you know, it's, it's, you need to start at the bottom and work your way up and learn your way up instead of starting off with the most difficult. Yeah. Um, and you know, the least probability of success model, right? You know, and I just had the, a thought too, when you said start at the bottom, a lot of times when we hear that, we think, well, that means I'm going to be cleaning toilets, you know, like in the, I, I love the Japanese culture with you get it. If you get a degree, if you study hotel management, mm -hmm. the first Me year 
you clean toilets. They don't care if you've got an MBA. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to be at the hotel cleaning toilets with the cleaning staff the first year. You know, you're going to start at the bottom. And most of us think start at the bottom means, you know, I'm going to be great. You know, and none of us should ever be above cleaning the toilets. If when you have your warehouse, right. Right. You the owner, get in there and do the dirty work from time to time. Show them that you're, you know, this is, this is something that you're willing to do. The point I'm going to make though is starting at the bottom doesn't mean living on rice and beans the first three years. Starting at the bottom with Amazon means the easiest low hanging fruit is right. actually putting money in the bank as fast as any other model you're going to experience. Right. The most attainable, starting at the bottom, um, it's you need to basically, in order to be really good at something, you need to learn all the aspects and the facets of the job, right? That's right. Learn and know how to do it all. And um, the RA and you know OA model is the fastest um you can turn a profit the fastest. It takes the least amount of investment. It has the least amount of risk. It's uh, compared to anything else. And that's right. why the Proven Amazon course was just such an eye-opener for me. It's, it's, it, was, it was truly a, a pathway, a roadmap. It was, it was put together. It actually, the way the course is flowed, everything made sense. And it, it all just clicked for me. Because oh, beautiful. I think the worst... The only thing worse than than not finding a profitable product is finding a non-profitable product. So a no buy is better than a bad buy when you're new. Because making a bad buy, let's say you're new, right? You start, let's say you have $100, right? You go and, and spend that $100 on something that's, you know, maybe sells... To, you just didn't want to take too much time in the store. So you, and you didn't want the, that feeling of losing, right? You didn't want to right. feel walked out empty hand. And you so, go on instinct. Yes. Perhaps. Yeah. And, you know, if you grab something that, you know, if your first product is, is five of something that sells like maybe once a month and there's 10 sellers on it and you maybe make, you know, $3 profit on it. I mean, if you do a little bit of math, you're not going to go anywhere very it, fast. It can be disheartening. Although right. one of the things we do tell people is just sell something, even if it's at a loss. Right. Don't stay there. But I'm talking about learning Learn the it. process of putting it in a box, sending mm-hmm. to Amazon with the proper labels on everything and seeing it sell. Learn. I don't care if you, if I lose 10, 15, $50 learning that part of the process. Right. And a couple hundred, if that's not a big deal, you've learned a new process now and you can scale by buying the right products. So right. sometimes when people hear me say, send anything in, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. They're thinking, well, Jim just told me to lose money for the next three years on Amazon. No, that's not <laughs> what I said. When you're learning the process mm-hmm. of putting the right labels on the right things, and you know, it takes a couple hours. If you're a smart person who can pay attention right. for two hours, mm-hmm. we can teach you that part of this business. Now you've got that part. I don't care what you send in. Maybe you're going to lose a few dollars. Who cares? You right. got a product on the shelf at Amazon waiting for it to sell. You know right. how to do that piece. That's what the Amazon 101 course is. You know, pick up a book in your house and scan the barcode and send it in. Let's send just get that in. part over with. Absolutely. Um, right. It's, but then from there, yeah, we want profitable products. We want to be turning $10 bills into $40 bills. Amazon's going to keep their 10 or 15 bucks. Right. Do it. And you're going to get the rest. And that's absolutely. The and, um, it's you know I'm I'm glad you mentioned just get something out there. It's I I see a lot on on social media and the Facebook group and um, a lot of I call it getting ready to get ready. Um, <laughs> I and use that phrase too. <laughs> you can throw yeah. as many getting readies in there too, and it works. Getting ready yes. to get ready to get ready to get ready. Yes, that's like you I'm doing my research to find everything. an accountant right now. You know, right. and I've got it narrowed down to 18 of my favorites. And before I start my business, I got to figure out who that's going to be. All right, like, no, exactly. you're never going to start your business. <laughs> exactly, and and you know the best the best way of learning is by doing right. It's, no one is a better teacher than your own experience. So that's right. if you do it and ask the questions and and there's plenty of people out there to help. I, I, I know I pitch in as, as much as I can, right? And um, and help those that were, you know, in, in whose shoes I was in, you know, maybe two months ago, right? So I now have the answers because others helped me and I learned uh, through my own, you know, experience by doing. So I try to, you know, kind of pay it back, right? Or pay it forward. And um, it's... Uh, 
but I see a lot of the whole private label thing. I finally received my product and I have 2000 of them in my garage. How do I do pay-per-click now? That just makes me want to cry. And then the other, a lot of the, of the other type of posts that I see a lot of, you know, is uh, how do I do this? And it's how do I do step 10 when I'm on step two? You know, let's let's do three and then do four and then do five before we go to 10. So that's why, um, you know, having, you know, having a roadmap and I go back to the proven Amazon course because that was my roadmap. It clicked for me in two days. Uh, and if my neighbor, uh, the one that I like, not the other one, was to start. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that one. <laughs> I'm joking. I just moved here, so I still like them all. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Ask me again in a couple of years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good fences. That's the tip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if my neighbor were to start this, I would, uh, this is what I would say. Um I would say put your money where it counts. Where it counts is, you know, you have the tre- you need the treasure map, right? To get to the treasure. Otherwise, you're just going to keep poking around on your little island and make all these holes and they're going to come up empty. Um, get the treasure map. And to me, the treasure map was the proven Amazon course. I mean, least expensive one, by far the most value. I mean, I probably shouldn't even mention that because it even sounds insulting to put it um mm-hmm. in the same bucket with with other courses i mean it's yeah. to me it's it's the manual and i know now it's now uh being taught as a university uh, curriculum which is fantastic it's business in a box basically yeah um, we have colleges that use it legally yeah. you're not allowed to call it university because that's what i wanted to call it i wanted to call it an amazon training university mm-hmm. that's really what it is it's, it, you pick yeah. your path you pick your courses we've got content for just about any direction you want to go Absolutely. Who have been there, but we're not allowed to call it that. So, um, it, it, and people, I, I'm a little nervous about this episode now because you are just so excited about the proven Amazon course. People are going to think I went down to the local community college and hired an actress and <laughs> gave her a script to, to be excited about the proven Amazon course yeah. because you're so good at it. Um, uh, you know, you see, you have to convince yeah. some people that you really are real with a real story. I think, um, I am, I am quite real. This is a real story. <laughs> And um, I did it myself. It opened up doors for me. And it's the reason why I'm, I'm three, three months and maybe 10 days in. And I have $72,000 in sales and, you know, three months and 10 days at about 30% uh, profit. So I'm not talking about um, ROI. I'm talking about profit. Wow. So That's, uh, that's phenomenal. That, I think are, so. Those are great numbers. That's really hitting it for sure. Uh, and the trajectory that you're on means you're going to mm-hmm. need a team eventually. Um, the it, it, Man, there's so many directions on my mind could go because they, quite often people who are three months in are saying, yeah, I've got a goal next month to find five new replens because I've already mm-hmm. found 18. You know, like, mm-hmm. that's awesome. You're going to be in a beautiful place a year from now. Right. But the trajectory you're on I would encourage you, please take a day a week off because I want you to stay healthy, (laughs) but we can talk about that offline. But the trajectory that you're on puts you in a very different category of managing a large team, a Mm -hmm. warehouse, multiple streams of income that aren't reliant solely on Amazon, Mm -hmm. uh, private label products that are going to, they're going to fly by and hit you in the face. What I mean by that is um, the keywords Pay attention to the keywords that are involved in these products you're buying. Sometimes, if right. you're, you know, if you're buying a you know Reese's brand or a Hunts or you know common uh-huh. everyday household brands, which there's tons of money in those brands, that's not where your private label idea is going to come from. It's going to come from a product where the generic term that describes that item is what's selling that item. Mm-hmm. Anyone can use that generic term. Right. You could use that generic term. It's a hot niche. And you didn't need a hundred dollar a month software to tell you that because you're selling 50 of them a week yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can go to that brand and say, Hey, we're going to keep selling that. That's great. Thank you very much. But I'm also, could I white label that with my own brand maybe and keep buying them from you to, you know, and get a little more margin out of this deal or maybe go get it, make it yourself. That's where the private label right. to use your word organically right. presents itself. Right. And you didn't have to go spend $75,000 and cross your fingers and hope that it worked and upset your spouse and fill your garage. Right. Mm-hmm. right? So it organically kind of presents. Um, 
And and that's right. when we get excited because now we can talk trademark and legal and you know FDA right. and all these other possible mm-hmm. things that you've got to go through. And we've got the team to do that because we've been doing right. it for a while. And that is the type of stuff that you do need a team for and you do yes. need some coaching and backup because it's for sure. you know me you know, having, trying to do that on my own, it basically, first, first of all, it would take me away from my core business, which would not only be not making me money, would be losing me money. And hiring a team is definitely on my to-do list for this year. Right now I have um, my husband and then also my son, who is, that's a goal for me this year. I have a 10 year old boy and um, I want to turn him, um, like um, PlayStation Network is now a um, budget um, line, like a it, it's a line item in Love my it. budget. Yeah. So he, it's about time for him to move from you know freeloader to actually productive member of the family. <laughs> yes. In our house, we say we say we're not raising kids. We're raising adults. <laughs> right. Yep. Right. Pretty like, much. Right. At the point and... where they're able to spend my money on things that they want. They're mm-hmm. able to start understanding how money works and to start right. contributing. And yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And the entrepreneurial lessons that kid's going to learn, just having this business under the roof, right? Uh, it's going to do him so much good. He's Instead of having that job mentality, which nothing against having a great job, right? he will always know, I could build my own business too if I want to, just like my mom exactly. and dad did. Exactly. And it's something that I would like for him because it's, you know, it's, it's a great thing to fall back on, right? Uh, yeah. Hard times happen to everyone. That's you right. can have the best college degree and you can have the best uh, references and you can have the best job. All of that can be taken away from you in, in, in an instant, right? Yeah. And well, I, I, I was just talking to right. a couple, they're both in the medical field. You think surely uh-huh. that's secure. Right. But, you know, COVID hit, she got furloughed. Right. Like, wait. I, we've got college oh. degrees in edu, in in everyone said we'd be set right. for life. <laughs> right. Like exactly. Now, you know, they were, you know, I'm I'm imagining she's probably in some kind of specialty field, you know, that right. didn't have to do with dealing with people in emergency room settings, you know. So all those other unnecessary procedures were canceled, delayed, shut down. Right. And, you know, some of those businesses even went under. Mm-hmm. You know, so having a, a medical degree that you spent three hundred thousand dollars getting and hoped to be, and you're still paying that off. Yeah, into your forties and possibly beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not necessarily security. I'm not trying to talk anybody out of their life path here. I'm just saying it's great to be able to say, you know what? I know how to pull an extra seven to ten thousand dollars out of the spare time right. in my week every month. Mm-hmm. You know, put th- put that money in the bank. Right. You know, pretty proven model. And something I, th- I imagine you've probably thought about it at this level. I'm having a lot of fun talking with you. We have similar Thank ways you. that we think we've we're probably the artistic people in our community today are like, these guys aren't saying anything fun. You know, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm thinking how secure this model is right. long-term because the world has changed. People shop online now. Amazon hired 300,000 people in the past few months mm-hmm. and they can't keep up. They can't fill their shelves themselves. They're yeah. they're terrible at it, to be honest with you. We, Any yes. of these ASINs, for example, and I want you to speak to this. When we find new ASINs, I found a handful yesterday where there's one, two, maybe three sellers mm-hmm. and the margins are ridiculous and it's selling 30 or 40 a month. And we're all happy to share the buy box and get our 15 or 20 sales a month on this ASIN mm-hmm. that's making us each, you know, seven, 10 bucks a sale. Right. Easily restocked. Are you running into some of that? I'm, um, I'm actually, um, the way I think of replans is to me, anything that I've sold and I can sell again, to me, it's yeah. a replan. Exactly. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have to turn. Um, obviously I'm trying to work up to the point where I can, find consistently find those replans that um that i can turn you know there's 30 sales per day right that you know a few bucks profit that's that's ideal but again i am brand new i spent a lot of money on getting ungated in all these categories but when you this, say spend money to get ungated we need to explain what that is i'm sorry oh uh, so that what that is basically i didn't spend money on any companies to help me ungate it i spent money on buying product Yes. From wholesalers in right. order for Amazon to ungate me in those right. categories. Because sometimes so Amazon I, will say, hey, wait, you can't right. sell this product until we know you're right. legit. Mm-hmm. So send us an invoice proving you bought 10 units of this item from a legitimate source and we Correct. will 
ungate you, right? Correct. And then you can sell products in that category. Right. And so that's, and, what, yeah. And if I hadn't had uh, the expenses of buying at times losing products right. just to get ungated in those categories or those brands, my profit margin would have actually been a lot higher. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. So I basically, um, it's funny. I, I, I haven't really made many bad buys because again, I had the roadmap and I'm, I like reading data. Keepa is, is the most crucial piece of, of software you can use. And it's not even software. It's a, it's a chart, right? It's, it's lines. Does it look like it's a beating heart or is it flatlined? Right. It's, it's pretty much, it's not that complicated. It, uh, but, you know, you can go deeper to see more data, which I do. I love looking at data and becoming an expert in Keepa is what's allowed me to come here and right. um, or to get to this point. And another thing that I want to put out there for others to, to start doing because it's been working for me. So one thing that I do just when I see something I see a lot of newbies, especially getting hung up on rank, 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 rank. You know what? I have never looked at one rank. I don't care if rank is 6 million, rank number one. I never looked at it. Rank, just like my opinion, it doesn't matter. Insignificant. Oh, oh, you're so you're just full of great little tweetable clips. I love it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Well, yeah. I, what oh, I look at is great. history. Yes. And when Keepa opens up and I see that it's basically three months of flatline, but maybe are there have there been any sellers during those those you know three months? Go back, go back and back and back. And um this is where online arbitrage is it works so much better for me because I'm I'm geeky, I'm fast to technology. And mm-hmm. if you're not good at technology, I suggest you improve. Uh, not you, just your general, the general listeners. But yeah, uh, I, I basically say if you can use a smartphone and email, you've got yes. the tech skills you need. But there's some people who are intimidated mm-hmm. by that. Actually, one of our right. best coaches now, who is arguably the best pay per click nerd guru in our leadership <laughs> community, right. hadn't touched a computer or a smartphone or any of that until like right. five years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now he's just geeked his brain works that way well beyond where mine does but i don't want to intimidate people by it and when you talk about the chart right some people are like, oh i don't want to look at charts and data that sounds boring you talk about this line going up and down what is that what is the most important data on amazon that they freely share with any of us if we're paying attention is the drop and rank in rank, rank. Mm-hmm. right and so it's a drop in rank means what drop signifies a sale right a sale at being least made. one sale right and it right and it's, you know, but I, I like to go beyond that. So what I do is I go back, right? And one thing that I love and one thing that's really allowed me to, um, to put some more money in my pocket is I find dead, I find recently dead listings, listings with rank unavailable or, li- or listings that... Um, all I have to do is go in, go in and improve the description and I improve keywords. Oh, and that is you're now digging in a little bit. Good. Wow. Just three months in and you're improving listings. That's impressive. Just uh <laughs> it, it's just something that I like. And it, it yeah. it's it, you know, keywords, it's I don't know. I'm on, I'm I'm the generation that kind of I didn't grow up with. I'm a I'm a zenial, I sure. guess. I'm like kind of that in between. So I grew yeah. up without technology, but it it came up came out when I was in I guess high school, and it's sure. you just kind of grow with it, right? Yeah. But um, it would just for the listeners' sake, let me just throw uh-huh. something in there. We've got some of our top replin sellers who mm-hmm. never set up a new listing. They never tweak a listing. They don't like mm-hmm. try to improve it in any imaginable way. They don't even know how. Probably. Right. They're just going out there and saying, ooh, Keepa says this is a winner. I'm going to sell five of this and see what happens. Right. Ooh, that's selling fast at a nice ROI. I'm all in now until someone tanks the price a year from now. I'm going to get my 10 grand out of this ASIN. And they go all Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Right. And, and when I say go all in, it's, right. they're resupplying as it sells. One sells, mm-hmm. send another one in. Two mm-hmm. sell, send two more in. Right. It, so you're just monitoring as they sell, I send more in. So and that's, we don't hit zero. We don't want to hit zero because now we right. have no chance to make money on that ASIN. Right. Absolutely. And that is something that I, um, that I do right now. I don't have, 
I do have a couple of things that sell, um, that have the profit and the velocity, but um, because I'm only three months in, I basically got ungated in uh, grocery and household and toys and all these like fancy toy brands. Guess how much of that I sold? Zero. Yeah. All of these None of this is fancy stuff, you know, there's no glitz and glamour. Mm -hmm. It's your your it's basically like bottom feeder stuff. It's yeah. it's your bread and butter is boring. A, yeah, yeah. Everything that a new person is what I sell now at this level is what I sold when I first started. Mm -hmm. It's uh and you know the it, it's about finding it's about digging in places where you wouldn't normally dig, right? It's not, again, it's not, oh, I like this, so I'm just going to scan this, right? No, it's about, um, it's going that a little bit above and beyond to find the profit and to find it the easier way because going into, let's say, Walmart, I am not a Walmart shopper um, myself, or I haven't been, now that I'm, about to get into grocery, I think that's going to be a go-to. But um, I haven't been a Walmart shopper, you know. But it's I'm about to. But what I'm going to do is I will pick an aisle, I will pick a corner, and I'm going to see. There's, um, let's say, um, I don't know, just pick a corner, right? And you have maybe one or two or three brands, and right. that a, a certain topic, right? Yes. A certain category of product. And I wouldn't even open the um, Amazon seller app. I would open the Amazon.com, right? Or the Amazon app. Right. Yep. Because Amazon, I mean, it's all it's all um, algorithm based, right? And it's, it's geared toward sellers don't make Amazon money. Buyers make Amazon money. Well, That's sellers right. do too, but it's geared toward sellers. Yes. So searching as a seller will give you what Amazon would show a seller first, right? So what would they show shoppers? Right. I mean shoppers, yes. Sorry. And uh if you search as a shopper, you will find what will benefit fit you as a seller. Yeah. Uh, so I would search that brand or maybe that category. Let's say I don't know there's ice cream scoops, right? I'm sure there's several different brands in Walmart. So I would search ice cream scoops and then I would look at the listing versus what's on the wall, right? Or maybe grocery. Let's go look at, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't even been in the grocery aisle yet. So it, even though I've been- to say, you know, th this is a specific example and I'm not going to tell you, you know, but this is what I, th I can go find mm -hmm. 15 to 20 per hour if I'm left alone and there's no- Short people wow. asking me to grab things off of a tall shelf, if you know what I'm saying, which I do the whole time. So if I was uninterrupted in the store by myself without mm -hmm. just, I, I can't help myself. I'll see someone looking for a product. I'm like, right. I'm like, man, where are the green beans? They should, I'm like one aisle over about halfway up. You know, like, because I know the stores, you, you learn stores so quickly doing this stuff. Right. Um, and, and we're in the process of hiring shoppers right now. I'm kind of filling that gap, but I've been doing this for 20 years. Like I know this stuff, but mm -hmm. I would be standing, let's say, let's say green beans. I don't type, I don't start scanning barcodes. I type right. in Del Monte. I type mm -hmm. in, you know, and maybe say Del Monte green bean. And then I type in maybe with the other brand that's there that has a lot of labels on the cans. I'll type mm -hmm. it in and the word green bean into amazon.com. I love mm -hmm. that you made that point and just start scrolling. Probably right. nothing on the first page, page two, page three, page four, page six. Wow. There's a three pack of the green bean that's right in front of me. That's selling for $24. Yes. And there's only two other sellers and it's only selling twice a month for each of us, according to uh -huh. Kiba. But I'll take an extra $20 a month income stream. That's basically what I just found. Grab six, test it out. Sure enough, I was right. Once a month, we're grabbing six of those cans. And turning them into a twenty dollar bill. That's the business. Times right. a thousand ASINs. Just do it over well, and over and over. Right. That's it's right. a it's and a blueprint. It, yep. You just need to follow it. That's right. That's right. It's brilliant. I want to hear some of your numbers. I think we've given some people some really good content, enough to be interested. There's no way we're going to teach people everything they need to know to go do this, or we would. We need some visual you know, 
the course is 29 bucks, guys. It should be 3000 Maybe it will be at some point. Definitely. Um, proving Amazon course is the way to go if you want to be stepped through this. But I want to hear, I want to put a kind of cap on your story as we wrap up this episode. Uh, to share with us some so, numbers, any more details. of. So basically at the mid end of September, I sent into Amazon three boxes of a very niche, niche books, right? Three boxes. They hit Kenosha, Wisconsin. You know, they actually got checked in within two days. Whoa. And I think September 20th. Yeah, I know, right? I'm excited. Um, every time something goes to Kenosha, I know they actually scan it in pretty quickly. But um, have a good reputation. They well, definitely better than the one down the street from me. I'm not going to mention which one that is. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> But I uh, actually considered getting a job there just to try to, you know, move up the ladder so I can improve their systems and processes. Yeah, that sounds like you. I've known you a very short period of time, but I could see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted. So I saw my first book, I think it was September 28 or 29. And at, at the same time, you know, I had a hundred dollar day and I was so excited. But then I was thinking, I just quit my job. I can make a hundred. I mean, I'm I'm very good at doing some quick math, right? And I'm a grown-up, so I have bills. And you know, a hundred dollars a day, I'm like, there's that there, there's gotta be a better way to scale, we gotta this. scale I mean, this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, like even at a 30% profit, I mean, I can't be making 30 bucks a day, right? It's um so that's when I was watching YouTube and um I'm not even sure right now how exactly I found the proven Amazon course. I think it might have been in a a comment section on um, a YouTube video, but I checked it out and then I started Googling it and I saw that it was, you know, it's not one of those, um, you know, quick get rich, quick schemes. It's not a private label uh, thing. It's an actual training program. And I researched it for a couple of days. I don't do anything. I don't really buy anything without really searching, you know, Googling it first and reading reviews. And um, I felt like the Proven Amazon course was, it really had the the, the general backup, right? And the, the social media backup and the, the reviews and the- yeah, The social proof, the social proof, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. And to me, you know, to me, that's important. Yeah. It and be. yeah. So I thought, you know, it's 29 bucks. I mean, my God, I just, you know, spent, I spent 10 times that on just this distributor list, you know, yesterday. So, uh, which was actually, I bought this drop shipping course just to get the list of distributors, which will be, you know, down the road will, you know, probably be a smart thing, but um, so I jumped on the proven Amazon course. I basically binge watched it for like two days. I watched all of Amazon 101. I watched uh, the replants course. I did watch the Keepa one a couple times because I really enjoyed it. Um, there was a section there with Honey and Jimmy Smith that I think I watched probably like three times because right. I just really enjoyed it and we're getting ready to add a lot more keep a training by the way there's four or five videos that jim and i have kicked around just today uh there as listeners are listening to this the the that section of our course the course is always improving the different modules are always improving Mm -hmm. being replaced purge out the old bring in the new uh, but we're bringing in some new keep a chart training uh here in just the next few days so uh that the course is constantly improving Right. So to me, that is the most crucial piece right there. It's the keep our training and the, the initial training, right? You can figure out and play with fancy stuff later. Later, It doesn't matter. You need to put bread on the table tomorrow. And the way to do that is to get started and make good buys. And the only way to make good buys is by using Keepa, in my opinion. Um, anything else is, is just a guess, right? You just throw mud against the wall and yeah. hope it sticks. It, it just, it, just to, to pull out my soapbox for just a second, because there's a lot mm-hmm. of other tools out there and people are saying, well, there's there's other tools that, that they tell me exactly how many units you're going to sell if I put in a keyword. And like, you know, that's valuable, right? No, those that's a complete guess. It's wildly wrong as often as it's correct. The only, th- because Amazon doesn't share sales data with any of us, the only way to know how many units a product sells every month is to sell it yourself. That's the only mm-hmm. way to know. Or you got a buddy that sells it and you ask him. Hey, how many right. units a month does that sell? You know, if you got that's why they're called sales estimators, right? Yes, they right. estimate 
But Keepa so, doesn't estimate anything. It right. says today this product went from a rank of four hundred thousand to a yep. rank of two hundred thousand. What right. do we know? At least one unit sold. It could have been fifteen units. Right? No, Amazon won't tell us. They won't tell right. any. They won't even tell the people with the expensive software how many units sold. That data is private. Tell no one knows except the person who made the sales. But Absolutely. we do know the rank dropped. So at least one, maybe a lot more sales made. Mm -hmm. And then the rank starts slowly creeping up as other products sell and it doesn't. And then it drops mm -hmm. again when at least one sale is made. And keep us checking every few hours, every ASIN on Amazon and tracking those drops. And those drops are the heartbeat you talked about, up and down, up and down, up and down. Right. Up. And so learning to read that chart and what it means is invaluable. And we don't care about the rank. We just care about the pattern. Right. Absolutely. It's a very visual. That's all that thing. matters. It's a it's a it's a visual pattern. If it's a flat, boring, long mm -hmm. over the long period of time, and it's maybe curling up slowly, like yeah, it's kind of boring. It's not doing anything. Right. No. Uh, unless no one's trying to sell it, and they're like, I might try to sell one of those and see what happens. But learning to read that chart is the is the yeah, it's that's the key to this whole model, the replens model. It's not the key to succeeding on Amazon. It's the key to the replens model, which is where we start 95% of our students. And that's where you started. And that's where you're succeeding. Absolutely. Quickly. Where do you want to be six months from now with your Amazon business? What What are your thoughts on that? Do you, not to put you on the spot, maybe you think well, more in terms of one year goal or next month, or just give me some, ran, some round numbers of where you'd like to be and where you think you'll be. So I'm thinking my first three months, I averaged 20,000 a month. So I'm thinking for the next, you know, for 2020, I'm thinking a 300,000 uh, sales goal is not. Uh, it's not unrealistic at all. It's not right. And it, it's. Because you'll be able uh, you know, to take it's advantage going of to Q4. Be, Q4. Right. And, and you're not going to run out uh, and buy the, the most exciting, hottest Christmas toys. We walk right past that stuff. If it's not going to be on the mm -hmm. shelf three months from now for me to easily go buy more, I'm not excited mm -hmm. about it as a replen seller. The seasonal stuff does right. nothing for me. Now I'm not going to walk past okay. $50 bills. I'll throw a few of them in my cart, but I'm not excited mm -hmm. about those because that's not a new income stream. That's a one-time opportunity. To right. $10 it's kind of like the clearance style, right? Right. Clearance you style. Go, like, it's mildly yeah. entertaining. You find something, you might find it one more time, but then it's over, right? It's, right. it's a lot of effort put into something that is not going to be uh, you know, you're buying milk. You want to buy the cow that produces milk over and over and over Beautifully and over. Beautifully said, yes. And that is the replan model, right? It's yeah. basically teaching a man how to fish versus, you know, handing him a fish. It's, it's building a system. It's building absolutely. a business instead yes. of turning dollars into, turning hours into dollars. Absolutely. And, right. you know, it's, it's, it's as exciting as it looks on YouTube, you know, chasing, you know, following someone around the store. Store and they're grabbing this and they're grabbing that and they're going to make, they show the app and they're going to make 50 bucks on that. Yeah, you make 50 bucks on that, maybe on what, five items, right? But something that you make five bucks on a hundred times during the month definitely will beat that, beat that quick win, right? So you're asking about my numbers. So going back to my numbers. So I started at the end of September, my October numbers, I ended like $30 short of 6,000 in October. And that's big, and that was a lot of books and a lot of uh, small stuff I had. Most of my boxes were just sitting on the dock at a distribution center. Right. In November, my second month, I ended at 18,000. In December, my third full month, I ended at 38 and a little bit, 38,000 and a little bit. So as of this morning, I was at 72,000 for inception to date, which is, you know, September 29th. It's three months and 10 days or something like that. And, and what's, your, what's your routine like? I know in the beginning, there's that period of intense focused right. effort. And we alluded to that where you've kind of got to focus in and, you know, right. you've got to pay attention to all the details. It mm -hmm. gets a little easier. You're starting to enter into that like, like kind of, it's just a little easier. It's not as intense. I don't, I'm not sweating that I'm going to mess something up anymore. You're just uh -huh. kind of doing the business. So what's your routine look like now as you scale towards that $300,000 year? How many hours a week are we talking for you? I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm used to working 80 hours a week. I mean, 60 is the vacation for me. Um, <laughs> But honestly, I have been, especially in December, December really kind of, I think I would have had a much better month, but it kind of, uh, 
Um, I started doing quite a bit of FBM because I noticed the trend on my existing listings. I saw that all my FBA items were the buy box was given to a higher uh, price point FBM. So mm -hmm. I saw that on about three of my listings. So I started testing. I, I grabbed some more of the things that I had FBA and I started testing on my own listings, my own FBA versus my own FBM. And I noticed that I priced, I, I priced my FBM items four or five dollars higher than my FBA items. Right. And I got the buy box instantly. And um, I, I ship immediately. If it's, I do something FBM, I ship the same day. Right. And I think the algorithm likes something about it. So long right. story short, I ended up selling a lot more FBM. And But that really, really, the amount of effort that that took, I made the mistake instead of doing FBM makes sense to me if you do a lot of units of the same item, you know, yes. you have the same item, you know where it's at, you have it ready, you have the packaging for it, you know what it weighs, you know the dimensions. I listed like all these different things, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm not going very deep yet. I'm right. going wide, yes. right? Yes. And that was an actual uh, a, a killer for me. I ended up spending sure. days in middle of yeah. December. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. packaging FBM. This orders. could almost be an entire module of a training. And uh -huh. let me just break it down because we got some people who are brand new and I don't want to lose them right. here. When you say FBM, we're talking about fulfillment by merchant. That's us. With When mm -hmm. you sell on Amazon, you can either send it to the warehouse and you're done with it. They'll pay you mm -hmm. when it sells. Or you can say, you right. know what? I'm going to kind of do eBay this thing. When one right. sells, Amazon's going to tell me and I'm going to ship it. That's FBM, mm -hmm. fulfillment by merchant. Well, the challenge mm -hmm. is you got to remember where it is. And if you right. got a bunch of things, you're fulfillment by merchant. It, you know, you get your wall of products. Like, hmm, where did I stick those? I know I had three of those. Yeah, I, right. I can't, find the, I can't find the third one, right? You, so you get into that whole warehousing thing in your own house. Mm -hmm. What I typically, in the what I would tell you is never FBM anything, unless it's one of your really top producers, it's kind of churning. And like you said, we're selling a considerable amount over and over again. Right. You keep them in that corner over there. It's one of our top 5% performers. Mm -hmm. But do the math too, because- you actually make more money with FBA than FBM mm -hmm. on almost everything. You make more money if you have, because of the shipping that you have to absorb. Right. But you want to use a tool like RevSeller to help you make mm -hmm. that decision. If you're not using it yet, that's a great tool. Proven amazoncourse.com slash mm -hmm. RevSeller. It's great for making that FBA versus FBM decision. It's also great for determining the ROI on an ASIN instantly because it's a plug-in in Chrome. You're right. on Amazon.com. You're not logged in as a seller. You're just shopping. Every right. item you see, a Pops Rev seller, hey, here's your ROI. Tell me your buy price. I'll tell you your ROI on mm -hmm. this product based on the current buy box price, which is what it's selling for right now. I'll tell Great you point. what ROI right. would be as an FBM and as an FBA seller. Mm -hmm. They get all the dimensions of the product plugged in and it's it's pretty slick. So you'd love that. Right. Um, yeah, I've seen it in action. That's probably the only tool I haven't bought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that we recommend. Yeah. I mean, really it's right. Keepa and then Rev Seller. And then as mm -hmm. you ramp up and you want to build a team and you've got people scanning products in, and we're doing a lot of this right now with our team, Inventory Labs is really good for that. Uh, right. You know, but there's other, and there's other ways to do this business. There's some people who swear by a different set of tools and that's perfectly right. fine. I mean, me, myself, I would swear by Inventory Lab, which gives you Scoutify 2, uh, which is a scanning software, mm -hmm. a scanning app for yep. free with the Inventory Lab. And then Keepa is the number one most crucial um, mm -hmm. uh, piece of software for me. And then this doesn't have to be expensive, but I think it's just not getting sidetracked by all these other, you know, um, this one's the best, this one's the best, this shiny. one, you know. It's, yeah, shiny yes, object. Exactly. So, you know, uh, watching YouTube is great, you know, but it's it's for, it's for great for entertainment. Educationally, I, I, I don't find it to be um, a good a good path, right? Yeah, it's a But I would platform. do... Right. I would do proven Amazon course. If if I had to start over tomorrow, I would get a proven Amazon course. Not because it's your course. It's because I found it to be the best for myself and clearly for everyone else. Um, that's 29 a month. I would get Inventory Lab, which gives you the scanning app, 
which is how much is that? Like 40 some a month, maybe Something totally like worth it. And I would get Keepa, which I don't know how much that is monthly. I paid for the yearly. Yeah. 15, 17 a month, maybe under hundred if you pay for the year or something okay. like that. Last time I looked. Right. So that doing it this way will allow you to put the money where it matters, where mm-hmm. you would turn a profit, which is into merchandise, right? You need yep. something to sell to turn a profit to grow. Right. Otherwise, it's, that is the golden, uh, that is the, the goose with the golden eggs, right? It's you need yep. to put your money where it matters. So yeah. spending all this money on on fancy software and fancy courses that promise you, you know, the the way you know something is is um, a better pathway or a better a better way of t- of learning, right? Is it doesn't promise anything. Um, it doesn't promise this get getting rich quick schemes. It doesn't promise, you know, the world in in a few months. It's yeah. it's the course that tells you that you need to do a little bit of the work, right? You need to learn. You need to do the work. It's uh, so. I think anyone can get started with a hundred dollars in tools and courses and spending the rest of the money on where it matters, which is in investing in merchandise. Beautifully, beautifully said. That's great. And you told me before we started recording, you've never been on a podcast before, but it sounds to me like, you know, we should be paying you to help us advocate and market <laughs> because <laughs> you're doing a brilliant job. Uh, and, and we let our testimonials speak for us. You know, you were saying, I, I would just encourage, this is kind of the, the gauntlet that I throw down on the whole industry. Mm-hmm. And anyone who claims that they can teach you how to make money online, I have a very simple question for the expert who's at the center of that effort. And like, mm-hmm. please show me, take me to that place on the internet where all of your successful students are hanging out and talking about your systems and processes and how it's changed their life. Can you Mm -hmm. please show me to that point? Ideally, it's free. I can understand if you want to charge a few dollars for it, but I would like to see it. Right. Please. If they say anything except, oh, here's the link, Uh run. It's that simple. And in our case, here's the link, silentgem.com. That's our Facebook group, 60,000 plus people. Good luck finding somebody that doesn't love the proven Amazon course. The only people in there that don't love it are the people who haven't bought it yet. (laughs) And (laughs) we've we've got hundreds of success stories. That's our marketing. That's my pitch. No boat, no stack of cash, no fancy car. I've actually got a kind of a a, a trashed out, you know, most of our uh, married life, you know, with kids is a trashed out uh, minivan with French fries and milkshakes from two weeks ago, stuck in the cup holders. You know? I mean, that's our reality. We're making right. good money. We'll live a very flexible, successful lifestyle, but I'm certainly not doing anything flashy to try to impress people because business is work. But this model works if you're ready to work. It's that simple. And you get a bunch of people who are working in a business model that works and expanding and the opportunity is growing. That's a pretty cool group of people to hang out with. Right. There's your pitch. You know, it wasn't very fancy, no flashing lights, no beach balls, no rock stars on stage after hours, but that's what we got. Um, so take it or leave it. Keep toying around on YouTube if you want. Keep throwing money at, at you know these big plans and programs and things, or just jump in. You know, you just said it brilliantly, Chris. Hundred bucks, and even a couple of tools you mentioned. You don't even need. You can do this without Keepa, but that's probably the first thing you're going to want to buy. Right. And, and I don't get paid a dime for saying that. I think we've got an affiliate link somewhere for the Keepa app, but we rarely use it. I think I've got fifty dollars from him over the six years. I imagine we've sent several thousand users to them at this point. I'm sure. <laughs> That's not the point though. The point is if we create success stories, we get this community of success. That's a powerful asset for all of us that we can leverage into other income streams and opportunities. That's what we're building is a community. I've been saying that for 20 years. I want to be a part of a community of successful entrepreneurs using the internet creatively. That's what we've got. Yep. And you're and one that's of our what's happening. Members. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. That's happening, and right? I'm about to join it. them. I'm about to join the 100,000 club here in the next month and a half, probably, or two months. Yep. And, and we um, got to get a certificate or something for that. You know, we yeah. just don't think of those things. Like, but that, that's going to be kind of cool. Like, hey, here's right. your certificate. Congratulations. You know, as long right. as your ROI meets a minimum, we don't want anyone out there trying to get a certificate and yeah. spending 100,000 to earn 100,000. But well, you know. I'm giving myself my own certificate. I have a goal of the day I hit 100,000, which is not that far off, right? About another month and a half or so. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to join uh, Ryan Rager's uh, Legends group. Beautiful. ProvenAmazonCourse.com yeah. slash Legends. That's the group. Mm-hmm. That, uh, it's like a yeah. family within 
our organization. Yeah. If you you want to jump out of the noise of 62,000 people on Facebook into a group of a few hundred people that are doing this stuff all day, every day, getting to know each other, kind of almost raising their families together. It's a really Mm -hmm. cool group. That's Mm -hmm. a great reward for yourself. Would you publish your certificate in our Facebook group though, when you make one up? That's more the way we do things (laughs) around here is, you know, we don't make everyone wear the same t-shirt. We say, Hey, make a cool one and wear it yourself and put a picture up. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm going to be all extra. That's awesome. (laughs) Absolutely. Can't wait. Well, we need to wrap this episode up. I think there's a lot of people who are going to to consider this one of their all-time favorites because you've only been this a few months. You just gave us some really powerful, practical ideas. You're very driven. Um, You're on a great path. And I can't wait to see where you're going to be like a year from now. Will you you come back and give us an update here when you start hitting these big benchmarks and don't forget who we are when you get famous? <laughs> I absolutely would love to join you again. This has been uh, probably this has been not only validation but definitely the highlight of my year so far. So oh wow, definitely enjoyed it. Well, I do too. I can't believe sometimes I get to do this for a living. Uh, but I'm going to go train a new shopper. <laughs> That's the rest of my day. No, I mean I, I do this stuff. This is what we do. Um, so I got to jump off of here, but let me talk to the listeners for just a moment, Chris, you, you are a brilliant guest. Be sure to thank your family for loaning you to us. We appreciate that, Chris. And for thank the you. listeners today, God bless all the business building warriors out there. Thanks for hanging out with us. And you gave us some of your most valuable asset, which is your time. And that's super cool of you to consider us worthy of that. If you never spend a dime on any of our courses or content or training or anything, the fact that you paid attention to us for an hour plus today, that means the world. Thank you for that. That's a awesome gift. And we're grateful. If you want more episodes, if you're watching this on YouTube, I do need to remind you, if you go to silentgym.com, you're going to see a whole bunch of episodes that aren't on YouTube. You're going to be able to listen to them because not all of our episodes are in video form. Most of them are audio only. So with that little reminder, hey, leave us a review, leave us a thumbs up wherever you listen on your favorite podcast app. We'd sure appreciate that because that's our only marketing. Our marketing budget is zero. It's you telling people how awesome the show is that helps spread the word. So thank you for that. For those of you who do a whole lot of that, big thank you. Appreciate you very much because the show is rocketing. And as Chris said earlier, you know, if not the top, one of the top shows in this niche, and we really appreciate the audience for helping us get there on a $0 budget. Pretty cool stuff. All right, Chris, appreciate you. Great guest thank today. You. And to all the listeners, we'll have another great episode for you again real soon. 